Right, now that we've defined some operations on sets, we're going to investigate the interactions between those operations. This is often what you do when you're defining some kind of mathematical structure. You make some operations on it, say this operation and that operation, and you say, well, what if I do this operation and then that operation, and then maybe this operation? What, what's the end result? Is it the same as doing any other kind of combination of operations? So let's, first of all, have a little lemma to start us off. A lemma is like a very small theorem. A theorem is a result that you have to prove, and a lemma is a very, very small one. So here's a very, very small one, uh, which is that A complement complement equals A. Now, let's just have a look at what this means in pictures. Here's our universe, and here's A. A complement is all the stuff outside. So this is the pink area. hope you can see that. Now, what's the complement of that? That's all the stuff that isn't pink, right? But all the stuff that isn't pink is blue. So how are we going to prove this? So first, we should note, remember what the complement is, how it is defined. So by the definition of complement, We know that x is in A, well, x isn't, x is in A complement if and only if x is not in A, right? But this is the same as saying, equivalently, x is not in A complement if and only if x is in A, right? So we defined A complement to be precisely all the things that are not in A. So you're in A complement precisely if you're not in A, which also means that you're not in A complement precisely if you are in A. Okay, so now let's see what we can do about this. So x is in a complement complement, right? That's the complement of a prime. So that's true precisely if a if x is not in a complement, right? But this is true precisely if x is in a. So we've shown our result which is that x is in A prime prime if and only if x is in A. So that means that A complement complement must equal A. So we've finished our proof, and what we usually do when we finish a proof is write a little box at the end. So that's our proof that A prime prime equals A. Right. So here's another one that is a bit more interesting and a little bit bigger and it's so important that it actually has a name and this is called de Morgan's law and this is this is important enough that it's a theorem and it's called de Morgan's law. This has two parts to it and it's all about the interaction between intersection, union, and complement. So the first part is saying that if you take the intersection of A and B and then their complement, well, see if you can work out what that equals. Maybe pause the video for a second and see if you can work out what that's the same as. Okay, you could do it by drawing a little picture. Have you had a think about it? Let's draw a little picture. Here's our universe, S. Here's uh, A, and here's B. And we're trying to get the complement of A intersection B. So here's A intersection B. So the complement is this pink part, which is all around the outside. OK, so have a little think about that. What's one way you could do that? Well, 
you could take if you took if you took B complement, you'd get quite a lot of that pink part, wouldn't you? If you took B complement, I'm not sure if I can actually make this picture sensibly, but if you took, let's try making it blue. If you took B complement, maybe you should draw this picture of yourself, you'd get this bit. And then the only bit that, the, that's still pink that we haven't made blue so far is this little bit here. But we could certainly do that if we also added in A complement. Because if we did A complement, then we'd get still, we'd get all this outside bit again, but we'd also get this part over here. So perhaps that picture's gone a bit mad now, but if you draw your own picture, I hope you can see it's true, this is going to be the same as A complement union B complement. So the other one we're going to do is the sort of our way around of it, where we're now going to take, instead of A intersection B, we're going to start with A union B and take its complement. And this time, what we're going to get, perhaps you can work it out or guess at this point, what we're going to get is A complement intersection B complement. So let me try to draw a mad little colourful picture for this one as well. Well, here's our universe, here's A, here's B. So we're going to take A union B, here's A union B, and we're going to try and construct the complement of that, which is all the stuff that really is around the outside. And that's supposed to be the same as the complement of A, which is going to be all over here, intersection the complement of B. So the intersection of this outside, the part that's outside A and the part, that, the part that's outside B is going to be this pink bit that's outside both of them. So uh, perhaps you'd like to draw that picture for yourself to make it work. Now, before we prove this, I'd like to say another thing about how you can think about this. Supposing that, let's, let's think about some actual things in here. Um, supposing that a is everything in the world that's got some red on it. And B is everything in the world that's got some blue on it. Right? So the intersection, so supposing A is everything is blue. Well, maybe I should have a better example than this. A is everything that is blue, and B is going to be everything that's square. Okay? So, A intersection B, A, maybe I should write it over here, A intersection B equals anything blue and square, right? And then the complement of A intersection B is going to be anything that isn't both blue and square, anything not both blue and square. Right. So how can you fail to be blue and square? Well, you could fail to be blue or you could fail to be square. Right. So the things that are not blue and square are all the things that are blue are not blue, anything not blue or anything not square. Right, my time is up, so we'd better do a formal proof of that next time.